You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first big conversation is what's been trending in the past few days in the Nigerian political space. The Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Pantemi, has been in the eye of the storm. Many Nigerians are asking him to resign over past messages he preached as a cleric, showing support for terror groups. Here's a report on the issue. The controversy started from his name purportedly on a terror watch list by the United States. In Pantami's response, he claimed that some cabals in the telecom sector, affected by the ongoing reform requiring SIM card registration with a national identity number, were behind his ordeal. After some of his past radical comments went public, he owned up of being naive at that time in reference. The question is how old is he now and how old was he then? What's your 18 years of age? You're an adult. You're an adult. Anything you say or anything you do, you will be held accountable for it. Is it telling me that at that time that he made that comment, if he had gone and committed armed robbery and he was caught, they were not going to prosecute him because he was a child? It just doesn't make any sense. This guy has extremist view. He wants, to, he wants a jihad in Nigeria. The student leaders, when they join politics today and they meet mature people and they rob minds, they, 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 they are more clairvoyant. They know more about the world around them. In any case, what are they, if you are accusing a minister of abusing power, committing an offense in, while in office, abuse of power, official misconduct, we can understand that. We can ask him to resign. But what, what, he, what he did has nothing to do with his job. The DSS is also being questioned here. Nigerians are asking if the agency did a proper screening before the minister was appointed and what this means. They also saw videos of debates between Pantami, the minister, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, Muhammad Yusuf, the former, the first leader of Boko Haram, who was killed by the police. Pantami sat with him as table in public with large audience debated with him and defeated him, telling him that terrorism is not the way. They should not be violent. If, if, if DSS saw that video, do you think DSS would want to stop that kind of person from becoming, a, from becoming a minister? Well, the implication is that you have a system that is a sham. It's a sham system. You know, so um, for, for us to be crying wolf about national security, and um, we are not doing what we are supposed to do, to improve on our national security is very dangerous. It means that the DSS is compromised in its responsibility of ensuring national security of this country. For some of his critics, this is not one of those cases that should be swept under the carpet because of the sensitivity of the position he holds, which has to do with data of many Nigerians. Thanks, Isawagi, for that report. And joining us to take a look at this matter is a lawyer, Inibe Efiong, Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning to you. This discussion over, you know, alleged sympathy to terrorist groups and calls for Pantami to resign, it's been a very heated one. You know, Nigerians are divided. There's the Pantami must go. There's the Pantami, you know, must stay hashtags trending on social media. You know, the divide is, you know, so glaring. But let's bring in the angle of the law. You're a lawyer. What does the law say about things like this regarding, you know, people in power and statements that seem sympathetic to terrorism? The first point I want to make is that every Nigerian under Section 39 of the Constitution have the right to freedom of expression. And indeed, under Section 38 of the Constitution, there is also the right to freedom of conscience and religion. So to the extent that Mr. Pantami or Sheikh Pantami or Dr. Pantami or Malam Pantami or Imam Pantami express views on issues, uh, it can be protected to the extent that those views were or are not inconsistent with extant laws, do not offend 
the interest of public order, public safety, and public peace. Those views do not, by implication, seem to give support to criminal elements, to terrorists, to agents who are working to subvert the integrity of the Nigerian state. He also has the right to religion, to profess his faith, either alone or in community with others. That is what Section 38 of the Constitution guarantees. But what is important in this case is for us to look at some of the comments he has made. And I like them within the framework of the law, within the framework of acceptable public communication, within the framework of speech that is tolerable under you know, a legal system. When somebody goes on public record to say that to publicly express support for terrorist group like Al Qaeda, like the Taliban, the Taliban in Afghanistan has been responsible for the death of thousands of members of the Afghan forces, for the killings of women, for the violation of the rights of women, under the Taliban rule, of course, before the, the lost power. Women had no rights in Taliban, in Afghanistan. Till date, the Taliban is still killing females or women who express views on issues, women who take interest in politics, and women who want to exercise rights that the Taliban believe they are not entitled to. Taliban is a terrorist organization. It has killed non-Muslims. It has killed moderate Muslims. It has killed innocent people in oh. their hundreds and thousands. The same thing with Al Qaeda. So, for anybody to go on record to express sympathy for Osama bin Laden, who was the progenitor of the 9/11 attack, to even to the point of saying that you know Osama bin Laden is a better Muslim than him. And for somebody to come on record to praise Boko Haram, to weep and cry that Boko Haram was being killed, to say they are my fellow Muslim brothers, to basically give soft landing to Boko Haram, there are two issues. The first is that these comments, past comments of his, may be offensive to the law, may amount to a contravention of the law. But even if what he said cannot be characterized as criminal infraction. Those comments are totally incompatible with the nature of the Nigerian state that is supposed to be secular. Those comments are offensive. Those comments are not suitable for somebody who should hold a public office. So. In fact, in one of the records in one of the statements that he made, Pantami publicly decrieded and deprecated what he claims were Muslim clerics accepting appointments in government. And he belongs to this Salafi school. And a part of that ideology is the belief that it is better to destroy the government from within. This, this report is available. The evidence is there. So if Pantami in the past had publicly deprecated so-called you know, faithful Muslim clerics or people in most, within the Muslim community for accepting to work in a secular state. What is his business in the Federal Executive Council? Well, let me... That let is me, the point. Let me jump in It's here. not about, you know, saying that uh, he said it in the past. Mr. If Ifeong. you look at even the comment that he has, he has not really renounced those comments. Well, Mr. Ifeong, I think that's what I was just going to get into. Um, you know, you've already established that he hasn't necessarily broken any laws based on the freedom of um, expression that he is uh, guaranteed. But um, speak on the point where he says that he, you know, was young and naive when he made those statements and he knows better now. Um, can we cut him some slack, you know, because of, you know, you know that um, fact? You know, is well, there any I, way I, that he can, he can show that he has a different mentality or different ideology now? Let me clarify. I, I didn't say that those comments are not necessarily criminal. I'm just saying that I don't want to draw conclusion. I don't want to make conclusive remarks on whether what he has done is a criminal. Those comments can be seen as criminal in nature. 
what I'm, I just gave you a spectrum from two dimensions of what you should look at. Yeah. To say that even if the argument is made that those comments are not criminal in nature, there are other grounds on which it should be held accountable. Now, as he renounced those comments, my answer is no. All that he did was just to an attempt to pull wool over the eyes of Nigerians by saying, oh, I was naive. Naive on what point? If you are renouncing, if you are recanting, if you are reneging from your pro-terrorist pedigree, from your antecedents of exuding and demonstrating sympathy for groups and organizations that are known to be terrorist groups, if you are renouncing them, you should be very clear about it. And it should be absolute. You shouldn't make excuses. If you say you were naive, you were inexperienced, at what age? One of the comments you made was in 2006, as at that time it was 33 years. So if Pantami is saying that at 33, he was a kid, he was naive, I think that is a very responsible thing to say. It shows how insensitive he is. It shows how much he underrates the people of this country. You cannot say, oh, you were a kid. But comments have consequences. Actions have consequences. The point is that, are that today, we have an ongoing war with terrorism. The Nigerian security forces are fighting Boko Haram. Nigerians are being killed on a daily basis. People are being kidnapped by these insurgents. So when you have somebody who has in the past demonstrated by his comments, by his speech, by his sermons, that to some extent he had this affinity with this group, what is he doing in a public office? What is he doing as Minister of Communications right. and Digital Economy? <laughs> Some other what thing is that has. With the data of I, I, I listened to what the Murik, you know, director said in, you know, the, the broadcast that you play. He was, you know, basically blaming Nigerians, saying that, oh, that what he said has nothing to do with his public office. Come of it. You cannot say that. Pantami has no business occupying public office. Okay. Because um, those comments he made are still live. Those comments he made are still responsible for why these insurgents are still killing Okay, me. if you're saying that Pantami has no business in public office, the question is, how did he get there in the first place? This brings us back to the screening process for ministerial nominees and basically makes us ask questions and look at all the lineup of all the minister, ministers we have now in the country to say, if we dig deep enough into their past to reveal what stands you know, they took before they became ministers, what would we find? What, how, re, how rigorous really is the process of you know, screening with regards to DSS, security, and all of that? Should we begin to look into that area as well? And how competent really well, are the people carrying out those screening? Well, we can begin to look at it when we have another government. But as long as the, pre the president of Nigeria is Muhammad Buhari, you can't forget about it. We are just wasting our time. This is not a government that is interested in, in doing thorough investigation, in vetting people for public office. To begin with, when Buhari came in in 2015, it took him six months to come out with his list of angels. At the end of the day, they were the same familiar faces that we have always known in the public domain, in the political arena. The same individuals, who, some of whom have been riddled with like, allegations of corruption. So where is the thoroughness? Uh, which of the secur which security agency in particular are you asking the these people to vet? As far as I'm concerned, Pantamis, you know, extremists and pro-terror comments could have even been the reason for his appointment. Wow. And I'm not saying this. You think so? I'm not saying this lightly. No, I'm not saying this lightly. Why am I saying it? Who is the president of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari? What is his past? What have been his comments in the past? Buhari is known as having gone on public record to say that, you know, Boko Haram members were being killed. He himself has made similar comments in the past. So you can see the ideological parity between the president and his minister. You don't expect that president to now come and say, oh, I'm not going to have somebody in my cabinet who has endorsed... Th these are serious claims, Mr. F. Young, that the presidency is in on this 
and that that's even the reason why he got that ministerial appointment in the first place. Serious claims, and we're yet to even hear from the presidency regarding this. It's just the opposition party right now. You know, the PDP really saying that, you know, Pantami should resign. He's breaching national security. Well, if we're talking about Nin here that he's spearheading, we're seeing that, you know, the data of millions of Nigerians basically is in his hands. And we're seeing Nigerians saying they don't feel safe if their data is with him really right now. Why do you say you, are, you have not heard from the president? You know, the problem I have is, I don't know where these strange expectations are coming from. Why would you even expect to hear from somebody who has made up his mind not to talk to Nigerians? So if I say, oh, I'm waiting to hear from the president, it shows I'm not a serious person, because this president is not talking to Nigerians on anything. I don't expect him to speak on the matter. The higher view we'll see will be one irrelevant or offensive comment by a spokesperson on the point, or one dismissive comment by the Minister of Information. But the point is this, let us not be distracted. We have currently a National Security Council that is overly, overly made to favor a particular section of the country. Buhari has not hidden the fact that he's running a, nepo a nepotic government. The appointments have showed it. Look at the security chief, where do they come from? So when you have a president who has shown open religious bias, a president who has governed with so much divisiveness, it is not that kind of president that we should keep having this expectation. I think it has now been proven beyond doubt. We are the ones even making excuses for this man. This president, look at recently, we, there was a credible report that the SSF had recruitment. And that recruitment was skewed to also favor a section of the country. So you have this ethnic, this religious sentiment that has crept into our national consciousness in an unprecedented manner under the leadership of this president. So when you now have people saying, oh, go and register for Nin. Nin was there before Pandami became the minister. It has nothing to do with Nin. In any event, how many sponsors of, why have they not used Nin? Because I heard Murik say, oh, or people are saying, oh, that it is operated in the telecom sectors who are against this reform, come of it. That is pure deception. Who are right. the telecom I, I, I wanna... that has been, that has been Zayf Young. the campaign of calumny? What yeah. is his business with the national data? He has not renounced his affiliation. He has not totally renounced his Is support for terrorist organization. Just yeah. no business keeping my data. Well, I'm, going to, I'm going to bring in, um, we, we actually hope to have uh, you speaking this morning with the uh, executive director of MURIC, um, Professor Ishaka Kintola, but um, for some reasons we can't connect with him uh, this morning. But, you know, I hope that we, before we end this conversation, you'll be able to respond to some of the things that he also said, you know, that... Um, uh, you know, some of the people who are, you know, fighting the minister are those robbers and criminals who want him out of government. But I also want you to address the concerns by people that one of the reasons we may have been unsuccessful in the fight against insurgency and terrorism is because there might be people in the government who somehow are apologists to these um, terror groups who have similar mindsets and have made the fight against insurgency difficult for Nigeria to win. Do you agree with that possibility? Absolutely. The, the war on terror cannot just be won by guns, by AK-47, by, by bombs. No. There is also the ideology that has to be fought, that has to be tackled. And I have given you facts. I have stated why that for war may not be won under this president. Because there is this ideological parity. There is this semblance of opinion. Look at what are we talking about as we speak, as I'm talking to you now, an organization that, you know, calls itself uh, Hizba is arresting people for not fasting in, in, in camp. Yeah. In Nigeria, a so-called secular state, you're arresting people for not fasting. Does it make any sense to you? So what is, what is the difference between that and what Boko Haram claim they are, they, are, they are looking for? An Islamic state. That you are saying because somebody has not fasted, you want to arrest the person. The other time we read, oh, they went to a school to arrest. Uh, uh, this, we, we still have this problem that we are not ready to address as a country. Okay. Mr. So F. Young, I, I, I wanted to... Uh, apologies to but Mr. F. Young, but I, I wanted to bring in the, the angle of something that happened yesterday. Uh, we saw a group, you know, sympathetic to towards, you know, you know, Pantami must stay supporting that movement. You know, they put a picture of a Nigerian journalist, Deji Adeoju, and they put a, you know, 
an, an X sign on his face and, you know, wishing him dead. And we saw a comment by Issa Pantami on Facebook, you know, endorsing that death sentence. When people, you know, reacted to that, he came on to say that his account was hacked. I don't know if you would interpret that as a retraction or, you know, Nigerians now are concerned that if it's not, why should I feel safe, uh, you know, about you holding my data as, you know, the minister in the position that you hold if you can't, you know, secure your own Facebook account? I mean, this is a conversation right now on social media regarding this. And if that's not true, really, people are saying, why would he, you know, alleging that he's possibly lying when he should not be doing that in a holy month, you know, and a holy time as this, you know, in the Muslim calendar? I don't know how you react to that, Mr. Yifyang. Well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I think sometimes we, you know, we just become a bit uh, too diplomatic about these issues. Pantami has not recounted, he has not renounced the views he expressed in the past. Somebody who has shown contrition, somebody who has retressed from his past, somebody who wants to be forgiven, somebody who wants people to give him the benefit of doubt, is the same person that made that comment on social media. Well, um, what does that tell you? And, 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 and to make it worse, he had the audacity to say, oh, my account was hacked. By who? And, and you are the minister of communications and the digital economy? Um, uh, apologies. He has to resign. There are no two ways about it. Pantami has to resign. I kindly hold on. Um, great that you've stopped there. I, I want us to now bring in the director of Muslim Rights Concern, Ishaka Kintola. Uh, who's joining us uh, via phone. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, um, Mr. Kintola. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you. So I, I want your quick response. Um, I'm not sure if you've been following the program, uh, but, you know, we're speaking once again on the Minister of uh, Communications and Digital Economy, uh, Mr. Pantami. What's your response this morning to those who are asking that he resigns and that his comments from the past uh, are enough, you know, reason for him to not hold a public office in Nigeria? I don't see. I don't see any the communication minister still respond. There's no reason. Pantami has renowned statements he made as a teenager, and of course, we need to follow the line of history. History, not only with the present, but also with the past. Today was born from the wombs of yesterday. Those who are thinking of, those who are quoting what he said as a teenager, 25, yeah. 30 years ago. Uh, Mr. Akintola, you know, we're, we're talking of, I'm following a long line of thought. Mr. Akintola, we're talking of 2000 to 2006. Uh, yes, sir. He, he wasn't if a teenager. Are, if you invite somebody to speak, you allow him to follow the line yeah, of I just thought. wanted to correct you that he wasn't a teenager no, don't correct in 2006. You, you, let me, you let me finish. Oh, uh, go ahead. Bring another question. We want friendly interview. Why is it that when Muslims speak, you want to cut them off? Go ahead, Mr. Kintola. We need to speak. I'm referring to what, what this thing has citing 25 or 30 years ago. Now, I want to refer to what Bantami did 10 years ago, 13 years ago, before he became minister. When he didn't even know that he would be made a minister, he debated, he had a debate with Boko Haram leader, Muhammad Yusuf. And he defeated him. The subject of the, of the debate was terrorism. Muhammad Yusuf was arguing in favor of violence. Pantami argued against it and cited verses of the Quran and the Hadith he was able to defeat uh, Boko Haram leader. And it was a public debate. The video things are still available. Now, nobody is remembering that. The critics just want to bring a good communication minister down. All right. Number two, down. number two, sir. The, the current Boko Haram leader, by name Shekau, threatened to kill Tami. He said, He's the Minister of Communications. He threatened to kill him about two months ago. The threat was made publicly on video 
on February 24, 2021, that two months ago. Those video, the video clip is in the hands of new journalists, but you are ignoring it. Okay, Mr. Akintola. life was in danger. Mr. Akintola. You are not thinking of it. We have your statement here with us, really. And I wanted to yes. ask you, um, Mr. Akintola, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How important is the issue of national security to, to the Murik? National security is for all of us. Okay. National security is for all of us. How important is the war against anti-terrorism in Nigeria? It is important to all of us. We must defeat terrorism. Okay. Uh, do you think that to defeat terrorism, we need to have people who are sympathetic to terrorists? We don't have a communication minister who is sympathetic to terrorists. That is very clear. Not a communication minister who has been threatened with death by terrorists. Not a communication minister who debated with terrorists and defeated them even 10 years before he became minister. Why are you generally ignoring that, that narrative? Yeah, it's funny. Mr. Akintola, it, 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 yes, I'm listening to Mr. you. Mr. Akintola, we're not talking about a public debate that they held. I mean, we have debates all the well, time. We are talking about it. We're talking we, about... we are interested in it. Okay. Nigerians are interested in that debate. They are interested in the threat made by the terrorists against Mantami. Okay, M Mr. Akintola, I, I, w I wanted to ask you, have you considered the hard facts that we've seen, the evidence, and the fact that, indeed, Pantami has not recounted. He simply said that he made those statements as a teenager, which we've all agreed that he actually wasn't a teenager, he was in university, he and he, he was an adult at that time. He said he had been saved when he became, when he knew better. It is in his statement. You want to ignore it. Do you have to bring somebody down by force? Pull, pull him down. PhD syndrome. Well, it's not. Well, it's asking not questions, all about Mr. Kintola. No one's bringing anyone yeah. down. These are important Madam. questions that we're asking, Mr. Kintola. I am an answering you, Mr. Kintola. I, I would like that you hold on. Uh, we have another guest. I, I like that he quickly responds to your views. In the if you're if you're still with us, uh, go ahead, please. Well. The first thing that bubbles me about the comments of Mr. Kintola is when he started by asking you why you are not allowing Muslims to talk. I, I think in the spirit of Ramadan, such comments shouldn't be made publicly. It, this divisiveness is not, is not good at all at all that the country. Why, do we, why must we continually create this artificial or stock this bias, create this tension between Islam and Christianity? It is not necessary. Now, Mr. Kintola has made his point, and, and I've heard him. But the reality is that as of today, as of today, we have as a communication minister, somebody who publicly stated his support for Sama Bin Laden, somebody who publicly endorsed the Taliban. Recall I listed the atrocities that the Taliban has committed. Taliban has killed thousands of Afghan forces. He keeps talking about the debate. I have read the transcription of that debate. The disagreement were on basically strategy. Pantami did not disagree with Muhammad Yusuf on waging jihad. He said it was not yet time. Pantami's view was that we need education for us to be able to wage that jihad. So there was no disagreement on outcome. There was no disagreement. Pantami, like Muhammad Yusuf, in that debate, also expressed his aversion to the secularity of the Nigerian state. So he is talking about the area that they disagreed on strategy. He's not talking about the substance that they agreed on. So when he makes this comment and say, oh, we should not talk about it, we are trying to bring down a Muslim, how many Christians do, you, do we have in the National Security Council? How many Christians has President Buhari appointed into sensitive positions? Is Bantami the only Muslim in the cabinet? If it's replaced, by another Muslim, is that a war against Islam? Is it Islam? Is it the position of Islam to endorse what the Taliban has done? Is Murik not desecrating Islam? All right, is Murik Mr. not painting Islam in bad light? Mr. Can you identify Pantamis, outrageous, irresponsible comments with Islam, and you say that people are fighting most that people are fighting him because he's a Muslim? 
I do not think such comments should be tolerated. All right, Mr. Efron, thank you. Mr. Akintola, I need to bring you in one more time regarding this issue. You, you mentioned in your press statement, I, I, you know, saying that uh, people who have been calling for Pantami to resign have ulterior motives and something to gain. Um, could you shed more light on what you might mean when you said that? Um, first of all, I take objection to the comments of the last speaker. He went too far about Islam and Christianity. I didn't refer to Islam and Christianity. I referred to myself as a Muslim. I said, you invited me to speak, you asked the question, and this took two sentences. After making two sentences, you want to you, you wanted to stop me. No, but you, you, I think you mentioned that and I you know, you, you, we, we're not allowing a right Muslim to speak. I am a Muslim. Yeah, that, that's, that's what he's referring to also. Now you he said did, that we're not allowing far. Muslims to speak. He went to go into politics, to go into government, the number of uh, Christians in national security, and all the data these people are dishing out are false. They are fake. You know, can't get out those, uh, those data. And the Nigerian Supreme Court of Islamic Affairs confronted Khan. Khan has been silent since then. Because we have Christians and Muslims in government. I think we have over 37 ministers now. 18 ministers. 19 ministers. So why are you people always repeating the fact that Christians are marginalized in government? We didn't, we didn't come here for that. Now that let me come back to the Pantami affair. Mr. Akintola, the issue remains a one, an issue of national security. The bone of contention here is if we have someone in power that was an apologist to terrorism. We have no idea if his ideologies have changed since then, because like we continue to insist, we have not heard a recount from the minister. We simply heard him say he made the statements as a teenager. I watched the video where he said that. So do you think that it is right or it is good for the safety of Nigerians for someone who held those beliefs in the past, and we have no idea if he still does right now, to be in a position of power and a position as sensitive as Minister of Communications and Digital Economy. That's the question I'm asking you, Mr. Akintola. And if that is right, if that is right, Mr. Akintola, would you then endorse that every other person who's spoken up about, about, about terrorism should even get ministerial nominations because you know, they made those statements years ago? I repeat my statement, which I made earlier. The, critic, the critics of Pantami and those who want to bring him down have ignored what's happened between what happened from 15 years ago now. And they are insisting, they are repeating what happened 25, 30 years ago. History is continuous. You can't bring in an interregnum. In the biography of a man, if the, if the history of Pantami's life is written today, you can't leave out his uh, debate with, uh, with, uh, with Muhammad Yusuf. You can't leave out the threat made against him by Shekau. Yeah, that is what you journalists, a section of the journalists, are doing. And it is mean and petty. It's unfair. Yeah, well, that is what the tell critics of Pantami are doing. It is mean and petty. It is unfair. All right. Ms. It is first time. First time journalism should be discovered. You need to be fair. You have to balance that story. Well, Ms. Akintola, I think you need to hold on. Um, and of course, we, we, we need to uh, end this conversation here. And it's not, you know, because we are being unfair. We're asking questions. And we would like to, you know, get a fair response from every person that we have this conversation with. It's not in any way an attack on anybody or on fairness on our part. Indeed, um, Osaro Gay. And he had a conversation with us. Um, he had his own views also. The interview that um, occurred between Issa Pantami and Mohammed Yusuf, uh, like you also referred to, there's many people who have their own interpretations of um, that um, uh, conversation and of that um, um, public um, um, debate, that, like you've uh, described it. Um, but thank you very much, Ishaq Akintola, for joining us. And of course, Inibehe F. Young, thank, thank you, you also for your time. Thank you for not Thank you for not... Okay, I, I think I need to just, you know, buttress the point you mentioned. It's not about Pantami, so to speak. If any other person had made such statements 
you know, Anne is in a position of power, this would be the same process that, you know, the same process of inquiry that would happen or, you know, to them. It's not about Pantami. There's nothing, you know, about Pantami that's making anybody attack him. If we find out today that, you know, one of the new service chiefs, you know, was sympathetic to terrorism, it's the same process of questioning that would happen. So it's not about Pantami. No one's, you know, attacking Pantami. That, that really uh, needs to be put out there. Yeah. And right. referring back to our poll, we did put out a poll on social media yesterday today asking Nigerians you know in light of the information we've seen you know that the former uh, the current minister you know was sympathetic to terrorism do you think that he should resign we had a total of 58 votes 81 percent of those people voted yes saying Pantami should resign uh, because he had preached you know messages you know for advocating for you know the lives of terrorists 14% of people said, no, he shouldn't resign, while 5% of people, you know, are undecided about this. All right. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving away from the minister and then moving to Jusun and the um, strike that is still ongoing. Of course, uh, more conversations concerning that coming up right next here on The Breakfast. <laughs> 